नमस्कार द टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन वुड बी ह्यूमन एरर वी हैव ओफन हर्ड दिस स्टेटमेंट विच सेज इट इज ह्यूमन टू अर एंड इट इज डिवाइन टू फॉर द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट हैज मीनिंग फॉर अस इन टूडेज लेक्चर Human beings, by the nature of their makeup, are prone to errors. Machines, on the other hand, have limited errors, and they have a lot of tolerance for problems. A number of machines can sort out their own problems. and create a much better relationship between the operator and the machine but we all know that machines are slaves and they need an operator for them to function human beings are bound by the knowledge that they have and their experiences with the world in addition to their physiological and cognitive capacities and limitations they are prone to commit errors so as a engineering psychologist one of the primary functions is to find out where and when humans can commit errors and once we know where the errors can be committed we can design the systems in such a way that it can take care of most of the errors some errors like decision making sometimes become difficult for the machines to handle so in those situations training and other learning can be imparted to human operators so that there is very less probability of errors errors can lead to accidents which could lead to loss of life property and many other problems the topic for today's discussion would be defining what is human error in addition i will explain to you how many types of errors can exist what is it being called an error how do we classify error and what are the techniques of handling error in addition we'll also look at those models which help us in studying human errors and predicting where errors can occur in a flow chart of processes which make a human and machine system function no most of the times machines don't do error and it is always the humans who are blamed for committing the error i'll also try and explain to you how this conceptualization that humans are the one who mostly commit error is faulty errors no doubt can happen because of human actions but a number of times it is the faulty design of the system which leads to humans improperly perceiving the output of the system 
and due to which committing actions which lead to error. Let me start by presenting you a scenario and explaining how human errors can happen. Ganesh owns a small tea stall where he sells tea and some eatables. He is very popular as he is a very good cook and throughout the day he has a number of customers. He has been working for a number of years and most of his customers are satisfied. Barring a few incidents in which negligence either on part of Ganesh or co-workers or the system that he handles which includes the equipments of cooking and process of cooking create problems. So, on a particular day, two group of people arrive at his tea stall and order two different types of meal. One person orders a purely veg meal, whereas the other person orders a meal which comprises of non-vegetarian stuff. Ganesh cooks his meal and keeps it at the counter and most of the time he is managing the counter. So, he is talking to other people and while serving the food, unintentionally he gives the non-vegetarian food to the vegetarian person and the vegetarian food to the non-vegetarian person. By the looks of it, both food appear to be similar, but when these persons start eating this food, they realize the mistake and complain. Ganesh tries to solve the problem by offering a different food, but an error has been committed on his part, which can lead to repercussions. Now, Ganesh uses a number of tools and equipments to run his shop. He suddenly finds that the cooking cylinder that he uses is finished and so he wants to take help of an electric stove which can help him cook. He has two electrical outlets, both of them are occupied. So, he quickly runs and finds a electrical distribution box, connects it to one of the terminals and plugs in the cooking stuff into this terminal. Soon he realizes that there is a fault in the circuit and the light goes off. Ganesh has done an error because he has plugged a high voltage electrical system into a low capacity outlet and because of this an overload has caused the short circuit. Whose error should it be recorded as? Is it Ganesh's error where he has incorrectly put the high capacity cooking stuff into the low capacity outlet or is it the design of the outlet and the cooking stuff which never mentioned that 
this electric stove should only be plugged to high capacity outlets. A number of other incidents can be related where most of us would hold Ganesh as a possible person or a source for errors. In the first case, the error was unintentional as he had the foods ready, but because of his attentional capacity being distracted somewhere else, he supplied the food to two different people in different orders. In the second case, Ganesh did an action, but the action was incorrect because he could not perceive the warning on the stuff because of which led to a electrical meltdown. These are some of the notions of error. While in the first case, a little bit of attentional check can relate to problems solving, while in the other case, good warning signs can help in unnecessary situations. In the first case, the error is not big and can be solved, but in the second case, the electrical meltdown could have led to the burning of his shop or a big fire and could have led to accidents which have led to loss in lives and property. What can be done to solve these kind of problems? Let me start first explaining what are errors and how the classification of errors can be done. So, human error occurs because someone or a group of people intentionally or unintentionally act in a inappropriate fashion or did not act as needed in order to obtain a system's goal. In our case, the two different scenarios had two different goal. One goal was offering the right kind of food to the right kind of people and the other goal was to get the electric stove started so that cooking can be resumed. Whether intentional or unintentional, if people do actions or they do certain actions which are not required in certain situations and because of this, the system or the goal of a particular behavior cannot be achieved, this could count as an error. Human error is an action outside the bounds of expected or acceptable performance of a particular situation or system. Any system and human have a particular behavior and performance which is in line with the goal of the behavior or the system. An error occurs when an action is performed which is not in line or out of the bounds of an expected behavior or a performance. Errors are usually unintentional which is picking wrong objects or resulting from conscious effort to perform particular action which is not appropriate for that situation. As I defined earlier, errors could be because of inattention. There are two objects on the table, one is a glass of water and the other is a mobile phone. Now, I am talking to a friend and I move my hand to pick up the mobile phone, but unintentionally I pick up the glass of water, soon realize it and keep it down. In this action, some of the water spill out of the glass 
and makes the desk wet. This is an unintentional action. On the other hand, a conscious effort like taking the wrong turn on a road could lead to problems. So, while travelling from my office to my home, there are multiple ways that I can take to my home. I decided to take a particular turn and soon realized that if I had taken a turn before, I would have accomplished a job or two and still reached home in time. But taking the wrong turn makes me do unnecessary driving to first complete a couple of actions and job and then reach the home. So, in both the case, there is an error. In the first case, it is unintentional. In the other case, it is intentional. But leading to a wrong action. So, errors can also arise when we fail to act appropriately such as forgetting to take our medicines. Certain errors can exist because we forget to do an action and that errors can be put to the memory function or failure of human memory. Now, although not errors put us in danger, we must reduce human error in order to enhance safety. When there is a system error, we might call it an operator error, but we need to determine whether the er error is truly human's fault. It is believed that most errors lead to accidents and some kind of situation which is not desirable. But that is not the truth. A number of errors lead to some discomfort but are not life threatening. So, we must find out how to avoid these errors. Also, generally as I have discussed before, system errors are believed to be operator errors. We believe that the system cannot be wrong. The machine can do no unnecessary function. It is only the human who would have intervened in a wrong way and have led to error. This is quite true because machines are made to do repetitive jobs without thinking. But it is not always the humans who create errors. It could be the design of the system output which could have led to problems in understanding the output of the machine because of which the humans would have done an action which they should not have done and because of which the error came into existence. Now, given the way humans make decisions, our memories work and our motor control functions, humans are likely to make errors when the human built system is not compatible for users. One reason why humans are bound to make error is because we have limitations both for our cognitive system and the physiological system. And if the machine output is not compatible with the human limitation, errors are bound to happen. Now, although we might conclude that an incorrect perception or interpretation of the system is human error, Donald Norman would argue that it is quite possible due to the design of the system. So, although humans are blamed mostly for errors, most of the times it is the design of systems which lead to imperfect or less than perfect output because of which errors can arise. Now, according to Donald Norman, if a system is designed such that it is difficult to understand or it is not intuitive, the system requires what Norman would call in the head knowledge or something that must be learned. Norman argues that for designers that are more intuitive with in the world knowledge in order to reduce errors. 
Donald Norman suggests that there are two ways to deal with systems. One is with the in the head knowledge which requires the human operator to use his own knowledge and then make decisions of how to go forward. On the other hand, there is in the world knowledge which suggests that system outputs are so intuitive, so self explanatory that humans require little conscious skill in performing those action and because of which performances can increase and a better human machine interaction can happen. Human factor specialist should focus on in the world knowledge where machines can talk the language of human and provide them outputs which humans can understand. An example here would be which most of us would have seen. If there is an error on the window system, it gives you errors like error at memory area 0 cross something something and so a normal user would not understand what to do with it. Although what the system is trying to tell you is that the particular memory region has a problem in being written on it. Human beings do not even understand that. A good system would tell you what to do and what kind of problem exists. Now, if errors do occur, they generally are not mechanical errors. When accidents happen, our first reaction is to look at the human. As the cause of the error, even if the design of the system or, or the human machine or human system interface is a problem. As I had explained to you before, if in a human machine interaction an error occurs, we blame the human for it. But a number of times, it is the system and the interface of the system which provides output which are not so meaningful for humans to understand and take necessary actions because of which humans take actions which could lead to errors. Now, the perception of error has changed from identifying the human as the cause of error to identifying problems within the total system design as the cause. So, from the newer perspective, it is not humans which are the root cause of error, but it is the system design which creates error. So, to reduce error that is erroneous actions with quickly changing and advancing technology, we need to ensure that the machinery or the equipment is compatible for human use. We should make systems which talk the language of humans and use in the world knowledge. Many errors do not occur because humans are able to adapt in order to cope with complexities of the system. A number of times, although the system would give you an error, but human beings with the adaptive feature and with their experience can adapt to these systems so well that they can avoid errors. They can use their own knowledge and experience and can avoid errors. But the better way to handle errors would be to design systems which speak the language of human. They are so intuitive that humans without using a lot of their conscious effort can solve problems. Now, beyond training the human user, human factor specialists strive to create better designs that reduce the need to adapt, which involves modifying the equipment for easier human use. So, training and better designs are some possible means to reduce errors. By training, Behaviors of human with certain systems will become automatic because of which 
certain actions would require lesser conscious processing and because of which a better interaction with the human machine system can be achieved which could lead to higher performances. On the other hand, redesigning machines in such a way that humans can better adapt to these new designs could lead to a much functional and fruitful human machine interaction. So, we have understood what are errors and we have also understood how humans are not the reason for errors most of the time. Let us now understand how do we classify errors. There are multiple classification systems and we will look at some of these classification systems. The classification systems of human error depends mostly in terms of how outputs are processed by human, but it is also how the inputs from machines get processed by the human which could also lead to error. Meaning which generally we look at the human behavior or the action and try to classify errors. But a number of times because of the incorrect perception of certain outputs from system, human beings use a wrong way of solving problems because of which an error can arise. So, errors could both be at the output stage and the input stage. Let us look at some classification system of human errors. Now, errors may be intentional or unintentional behavior, but this is an extremely broad category. From a system perspective, errors can occur at input at the process or the output phase. Remember when designing a system in the first section of this course, I talked about how a system can be designed and divided into an input process and output. Borrowing the same concept from there, errors can occur at any point of integration of these three processes for forming a system. An error can be at the input phase or at the output phase. Originally, the focus was on behavioral aspect of error or more specifically the human output. So, most error classification systems have targeted the human output and studied it as human error. But as I have explained before, it could be the wrong design or the wrong information that the system provides to humans because of which some errors can result. For now, let us look at the classical way of studying errors which is the human output error. Now, according to how the human behavior which leads to error can be classified, errors can be divided into two categories. We have errors of omission and errors of commission. Errors of omission occur when an action or a behavior that should be performed is not executed. If we fail to perform an action or a behavior, the error that we commit is called the error of omission. So, you are required to press a button to open the door. You forget to press this button and the door does not open because of which you get into problems. This is error of omission. So, omitting, forgetting or skipping behaviors are all errors of omission. On the other hand, we have errors of commission where when an action or a behavior has occurred, but it is wrong action or an action incorrectly executed that is at the wrong time in the wrong sequence or lacks the necessary level of quality, the error is of error of commission. 
So, you are supposed to take medication at 6 pm. You took the medication, but you forgot about taking it and 30 minutes after you are not sure if you have taken a medication or not and takes a double dose. This is an error of commission where you forgot that an action has already been performed. Now, behavioral output error does not help us understand and address the underlying determinants of error. Whereas, behavior outputs error of commission omission can tell you an error has happened, but what is the main determinant factor in terms of human cognition which has caused this error is not apparent. The cause might actually occur due to poor design feature which influences how the input is processed. At times it, it could be that the input could be wrongly perceived and that could have led the error, but we classify it as errors of commission and omission. So, those cognitive factors which lead to error cannot be studied by the errors of omission and commission categorization. A new form of error classification has been suggested. Now, the evaluation of error fo focuses more on cognitive process involved. So, Rasmussen designed a new way of classification where the focus of errors were on cognitive process. Norman 1981 focuses on the processes behind the output and sometimes the input by making the distinction between slip or lapses and mistakes. So, Donald Norman tries to classify error in terms of the cognitive factors involved and what he suggests is that errors could be both at the output and input level. Errors according to the cognitive classification are slips and mistakes. What is a slip then? A slip or a lapse is an error in performing an intended action, whereas a mistake is an error in the original mental model or goal developed which leads to the incorrect outcome of the system. If you remember the story that I started this lecture with, the process of giving the wrong food to the wrong person is a slip where unintentionally or because of attention losses Ganesh switched the food. On the other hand, the mental model that Ganesh has about using an electrical distribution box is that it can distribute electricity to various equipments. What he his mental model does not include is that different equipments uses different power and all equipments cannot be connected to the same power source. This fault in his mental model leads him to plugging in the high voltage cooking stuff into a low output outlet because of which there is a breakdown. This could be a mistake. So, this is the difference between what a lapse or slip is and a mistake is. Whereas, slips are more unconscious in the sense that as a process becomes automated, we often fall back into this automatic pattern when we are attempting to deviate from the typical pattern. To avoid slips, we have to make a concerted effort to do something unusual from the normal routine. Slips generally occur because certain actions are automated and because of this automatic pattern of doing a job, a little bit deviation in the routine can lead to slips. Now, if we have to get rid of slips, 
we can use a number of methods and an effort to prevent slips. For example, Ganesh could design his food distribution tray in such a way that there are two sections. one for the vegetarian and the other for the non-vegetarian and then put stickers or some form of indication for the vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. If he uses this kind of conscious effort, the slips or the problem of providing wrong food to the wrong person can be solved. Mistakes on the other hand are more deliberate and the result of conscious thinking. As the original goal or the direction was intentionally set but inappropriate, the plugging of the high power equipment in the outlet was intentional, deliberate but it was inappropriate. As mistakes are often more difficult to identify than slips, they can be more dangerous because they are hidden. Because the model that Ganesh has in his head about how an distribution works or an electrical outlet works, works, he can plug the wrong wattage equipment in the wrong outlet because of which a mistake happened. Now slips and laps are execution errors while mistakes are planning errors. Slips or lapses can happen because there is some inattention in the execution of a certain job. On the other hand, mistakes require people to do actions, but the actions are erroneous, which points to the fact that mistakes are errors of planning and action. Although this distinction between slips and mistakes is helpful, there is still a need for a better or more, more thorough distinction. Now, regardless of whether an action is the result of a slip or a mistake, the error is often the same. The distinction of errors in terms of slips, lapses or mistakes is good, but it suffers from certain problems. One being that whether an behavior is because of a slip or a mistake, the error sometimes is the same. So, knowing the cognitive factor of how an error happened may not be a lot helpful. A better way of distinction is required and this better way of distinction is called the SRK model of error distinction. What is it? Better understanding of cognitive causes of errors and designing safer and more error free systems taps into Jen Rasmussen's work on skill, rule and knowledge based errors. Human actions according to Rasmussen can be categorized into three different categories, skill based behavior, rule based behavior and knowledge based behavior. Whereas skill based behavior are automated, rule based behavior involves human to apply certain known rules and actions to certain situations. Knowledge based behaviors on the other hand require humans to use their own cognitive resources and solve a no wise problem which has not occurred before. And so the chances of error are very high. This distinction is a much thorough distinction of how errors occur. Error wise when the behavior or actions do not serve the situation well this kind of distinctions may help. Now, skill based behaviors 
are more along the line of stimulus response behavior that require little or very less conscious and attentional effort because the behavior are overlearned and automatic. Skill behaviors require lower level of consciousness and attentional effort since these behaviors are stimulus response actions. Again going back to the story that we started this lecture with. Providing the right food to the right person is a skill action. All Ganesh has to do is move his hand and look at the texture of food. Listen to what the person is saying. Match them and provide the food. It is an automated process which requires very low level of consciousness and attentional. And these behaviors are so learned and so much practice that it is an automatic behavior. Hence, the first kind of error could be a skill based error. Now, the stimuli in the environment merely access guides, reminders or signal as to what action is next. In skill based behaviors, environmental guides or reminders are available and these guides and reminders tells you what action to take. So, the texture of the food will tell you whom to give the food to a non-vegetarian or a vegetarian. This is an example of skill based behavior. On the other hand, rule based behaviors, performance is based on learned rules and procedures whereby the input from the environment serves as a sign to what proper rule should be used at that time. So, in rule based behavior, people use environmental signs as to what behavior is appropriate. As soon as Ganesh sees that there is a spark, world knowledge suggests that he should take off the electrical stuff. If he does not take it off, it will lead to accidents because his knowledge of worldly facts related to how electrical equipment works suggests that sparking on the connection point could lead to error or some electrical fault. And so, if you would have acted fast and taken away the electrical stuff or disconnected it in some way, the accident would not have happened. The user is working with a set of predefined learned options for actions in rule based behavior. In addition, there is a third category for classification of behaviors and errors in terms of Rasmussen's system and this is called the knowledge based behavior which is used when the individual encounters a novel situation. This behavior is significantly different from skill and rule based behavior as it is much more conceptual. The input from the environment now serves as symbol that requires better mental models. So, no known skill or rule can address the current situation and the user has to create a novel response. In knowledge based behaviors, no predefined rules are available. So, humans have to use their own experience and environmental based symbols and based on that, he has to perform action so that errors can be reduced. The example could be Ganesh soon realizing that this low voltage that has come or the sparking that has happened could be a possible problem with the electrical outlet and quickly lowers the miniature circuit breaker because of which he could have prevented further losses. This is a 
नॉलेज बेस्ड बिहेवियर और हिज एक्शंस दैट ही हैज परफॉर्म इट इज समथिंग दैट ही डोंट परफॉर्म टू ओफेन एंड रिक्वायर्स हिम टू ग्रास्प द इनपुट एंड मॉडिफाई हिज लर्निंग इन सच अ वे टू प्रिवेंट एक्सीडेंट सो दिस काइंड ऑफ बिहेवियर्स आर नॉलेज बेस्ड बिहेवियर्स नो वन वे टू डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन द स्किल रूल एंड नॉलेज एक्टिविटीज इज दैट स्किल बेस्ड प्रॉब्लम ऑकर बिफोर अ प्रॉब्लम इज आइडेंटिफाइड एंड रूल एंड नॉलेज बेस्ड एक्टिविटीज ऑकर आफ्टर द प्रॉब्लम हैज बीन आइडेंटिफाइड सो स्लिप्स लैप्सेस और स्किल बेस्ड प्रॉब्लम ऑकर बिफोर अ प्रॉब्लम और एन इंसिडेंट वेर एज नॉलेज बेस्ड एक्टिविटी दे ऑकर आफ्टर द प्रॉब्लम हैज ऑकर्ड इट इज स्किल बेस्ड प्रॉब्लम विच कुड रिजल्ट इन द प्रॉब्लम बट वंस अ प्रॉब्लम इज सेटअप रूल एंड नॉलेज बेस्ड बिहेवियर्स कैन हैपन only after that so problems coming up for once will require the operator to either use predefined rules or use his own experience and expertise and solve a problem so a before after distinction can be made between slips and mistakes or skill based and knowledge and rule based learnings now skill based errors tend to be slips and lapses whereas rules and knowledge based errors would be mistakes james reason applied norman and rasmussen's concept to his generic error modeling system which is called gems for understanding human error what is this system now functioning at the skill based level is primarily a monitoring activity which requires attentional check to ensure everything is functional and expected so when a person is functioning at a skill will based level he is constantly monitoring and using lesser attentional he is diverting attention occasionally to check everything is going okay and if no mistakes are there he'll continue with the behavior now if everything appears correct the individual will keep working as usual using the skilled based actions however when there is a lack of attention which is a sign is missed or over attention checking at the wrong time then there is a possibility of monitoring failures so if you miss your attentional checks this could lead to missing an possible indication of error in the system or if you check at the wrong time this could lead to further problems which can only be solved using a rule based or a knowledge based behavior according to james only when there is a perceived problem the individual moves to the next level of rule based functioning to seek pre-programmed solutions so when the operator sees a problem in the system and when he perceives that this problem is not a lapse problem a unintentional problem he moves to using those rules which has worked before and these program pre-programmed rules are applied by the operator to solve a problem individuals search their memories for known methods that have effectively used for solving this problem in the past so as i explained if a lapse is not the reason for a system error operators search pre programmed solutions or those solutions which has worked in the past and apply those to solve problems and reduce the error state now when the problem is unique however this requires the individual to move into a knowledge based functioning that requires the creation of innovative and novel solutions 
assuming that there are no solutions or pre-programmed solutions to the problem at hand. In those cases, the operator has to use his own knowledge about the system and memories, combine them in various ways to solve problems and this is called the knowledge based solving of problem. When using the knowledge based system, people often come with creative solutions to solve novel situations. They use the knowledge, expertise in the head knowledge, combine them in various ways so that a possible solution is evident and then they try this solution. If it works, they have come with a new solution. Knowledge based solving could be equivalent to KQ discovering the shape of the benzene ring where he often used to work with those organic structures which were close to the shape of a benzene ring. But by using his knowledge of how atomic structures work, his experience, he did come up with how these rings or benzene rings behave as both a single and double bond. Now, according to reason, people prefer to work at the rule based level because it requires less cognitive demand. Therefore, there are often problem solving failures because knowledge based functioning creates a great deal of mental load. Most operators would like to work at a rule based level. Working at a rule based level does not require them to use a lot of their mental capacity since the problems are generic problems or variations of problems which are known all they need is to find out the correct rule to correct a problem. So, if a pilot creates a small error and while doing a checklist finds out that a solution exists for this error he can quickly utilize the solution and correct the position of the plane. Had he used his knowledge based system, he would definitely would have come up with a solution, but it could have been that the solution would have arrived too late with no pilot or the plane to appreciate. So, knowledge based systems are time exhaustive systems and they require a lot of, lot of mental functioning. Up till now we have designed what is an error and what are the different classifications of error. Let us look at human reliability which is how trustworthy are humans, how reliable are humans. Human reliability is the extent to which human is error free and will not make errors. There is more reliable the person, the less likely that he will make errors. So, people cannot be trusted to be too reliable because they are more too prone to error. But persons differ in their reliability to committing errors. Some people commit more number of errors while others are known to commit lesser errors. Also committing errors are specific to tasks and situation and context. What we will discuss now is how to study this factor of human reliability. Now, it is easier to assess machine reliability than human reliability since our understanding of human error is a bit more given the issues of human cognition. Machines have known parts and known function and they do not go outside the limit or deviate too much from the way they are designed to function. Humans on the other hand have a lively mind which creates a lot of noise 
and a lot of problem. Human cognitions work in unpredictable and probabilistic ways because of which prediction of human behavior is difficult and that being the reason human reliability cannot be fully trusted. So, if that is the case, how should we study human reliability? Now, in order to design safer systems, we need to understand how likely a human will make no error. The process of identifying the risk and potential errors related to human operator is called the human reliability analysis. The process of finding what kind of error and at what point of the functioning a error occurs is the study of human reliability analysis. Now, human reliability analysis involves four steps. Step number one is to determine all actions required by humans in proper sequence of actions. So, first step is to understand what actions do human have to do and in which sequence like which behavior should follow what behavior that is studied. Second, identifying where in this whole sequencing and behaviors and error can exist. Third, determining the probabilities of these error, what are the chances of an error happening and fourth, estimating the impact on the system. Given the fact that an error has occurred, what impact would it have on the system that is analyzed. Now, once we have done all these four steps that is determining what actions have to be performed in what sequences, identifying where errors are possible in this whole sequence and the probability of doing what error is to what extent and also finalizing the impact of these errors on the final system. Our suggestions can be made for changes to reduce errors. So, after doing all this and identifying places of errors and types of errors, a change can be proposed. Once this change is proposed, step 2 and 3 which is identifying the errors and the probabilities of errors have to be re-evaluated to determining if new errors are evident and how the system has improved in terms of new estimates of error. So, let us look at these four steps one by one. The first step is determining all actions and proper sequences. In human reliability analysis, the first step is to understand the expectation of the job and every task and to determine the performance criteria for these tasks. Each task has a particular expectation and a sequence of performance and a criteria. The first step in HRA is to understand these. The process involves typical research methods such as observation, questionnaire, experimental simulations and task analysis. So, using observations, using experimental settings, using uh, in person talks and using task analysis, the HRA experts finds out what actions need to be performed and what is the sequence of actions that need to be performed in doing a job. For example, in our Ganesh example, uh, example that I have uh, started this lecture with a human reliability analysis expert could talk to Ganesh and find out all those steps that he takes while doing his job every day. So, a task analysis could be there and he people he could be observed. Understanding the work environment or the performance shaping factors such as workers level of training or quality of equipment should also be studied. So, not only studying the person in action, performing shaping factors for example, people's training, people's motivation, people's use of equipment, expertise with equipment and, hand, and expertise with handling the equipment and the work environment in which they were all should be studied together because they also impact performance and errors. Now, there is also a selected endpoint or point at which there is or could be a system failure. So, an end point where a system could fail should also be studied. In step 2, 
the HRA experts identify where errors could occur. So, once you know how a thing is done and in what sequence a particular action or a job can be carried out, the next step is to find where errors can exist. Now, there are several methods of HRA to find the occurrence of errors. Many of these methods of HRA refer to aviation and nuclear industry. Since HRA was mostly famous with uh, the nuclear industries and aviation industry, so uh, those are the ones that we tend to put at center and study uh, human re uh, reliability analysis. Now, to determine the human reliability, techniques of human error rate prediction THERP or THERP is initiated by selecting a particular point in sequence and detailing the sequence of events from that point forward in an HRA event tree. And what happens if somebody goes wrong for each action identified in the task analysis? For finding errors, the technique of human error rate prediction is used. Here, a event tree is created which lists all the events which are possible with a particular action. The point at which an error occurs or the point at which a decision is made, from that point onwards, all actions are studied and the possibility of error action is listed. This type of analysis get helps from task analysis, which also tells at which points the probability of committing an alternate action which is not required or uh, inattentional action can happen. Now, after completing the event tree, any action from the model that are not perceived as relevant to the system functionings are dropped. So, while doing an action or completing a task, a number of actions are performed by operators which are not relevant to performing a job. Those are deleted or excluded from analysis. Now, one needs to be conservative in this step in order to avoid eliminating critical actions that would severely impact the reliability analysis. While doing this, the human reliability expert should be using stringent criteria and people who have expertise in the system so that they do not delete a critical step in the performance of a job. The third step in human reliability analysis is determining probabilities of these possible errors. So, here the probability of error is predicted for each action of human output in the sequence. So, all those actions that you do for completing a job, each is given a particular probability. Now, the error identified at this step in TERP include error of omission, error of commission and extraneous errors. So, each action that people do for completing a particular performance or a job in a sequence, the probabilities of errors at each step is calculated and then the errors that likely happen here is of commission, omission or other errors, system related or extraneous errors. Now, human error data are estimated based on experimental data if available and appropriate. However, these data are seldom appropriate given the level of control used for creating greater errors in the laboratory. So, sometimes human databases are used or human error databases are used, but mostly this kind of analysis requires an in uh, the lab kind of finding data and analysis, which means that each study is unique to itself and data has to be collected for each study individually. Now, sometimes the determination of errors rate requires a great deal of expert judgment which reinforces the need of SMEs. While calculating a probability of error for any step that a operator does requires a lot of judgment and so experts are called in to give their expertise as to whether a particular probability for a particular action which has led to an error is correct and if it is not, what kind of corrections can be applied. And the last is the impact on the system. So, finally, we use probability theory to combine the error probabilities into a qualitative estimate of human reliability. Now, using probability theory and combining error probabilities uh, from different estimates, we uh, get an estimate of human reliability. 
as the operator might perform a corrective action after an error, we could create multiple equations that represents numerous behavioral sequences, some of which will lead to ultimate failures and others will not. So, when we have probabilities of all actions and all kind of errors, we combine them to create a uh, probability chart or action error probability sequence and based on that, we will uh, come to know those actions which will lead to ultimate failure and those which will not. Now, data for the HRA reflect the uh, general rule or average. The HRA data is for a typical user and so it will give you an average value or average fault analysis and might not apply well to single individuals. So, it is an average of everybody or a number of people who are doing that job. People are unique. As I have explained, they have different ways of understanding things and uh, people are different. So, the rules or the steps which are outlined by an HRA may not be true for each and every individual. It is assumed that individual operators has sufficient training as well as an average motivation to perform the job. Also, it is believed that people have training and motivation to perform a job and so those factors are also not counted in while doing a HRA. The last thing is once that therp analysis is complete, it is possible to make suggestive corrections to the system that would reduce error. Then the cost of these changes in terms of training personal equipment are uh, equipment changes can be calculated. So, once you do a therp and you find out the possibilities of error and what is the probability of an error and what corrective measures can be there, this could be suggested and based on that a cost analysis of training, personal system design, those kind of changes which can lead to not committing that errors is prepared. Now, therp uh, depicts or records human error as human output, what the operator did or what actions did or did not happen, we need to determine how errors occur cognitively or during the process and possibly the input stage of the system. Therp is more of an output based system, so it will look at what actions do humans perform, but at input system or cognitive uh, reasons for doing an error is not explicitly mentioned in therp. Now, the impact of error might appear the same, the type of errors could vary depending on when the error occurs along the SRK process. So, whether during the skill or whether it is the rule or whether it is the knowledge based behavior where the error is occurring will determine what kind of error it is and will help us in understanding what errors are there and the probability of doing these errors. Also, by knowing uh, at which point of the SRK analysis an error occurs, it would give us a much better design so that it can be adapted to a large number of uh, users and operators working in the same machine or the same kind of setup. This is what I have for you today. Namaskar and thank you.